Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Dead Flesh Retro Plays Fish by Magnetic Scrolls. My name is Chris, sporadically referred to as Dead Flesh Retro. And I'm Lee, sporadically able to make a decent joke. Are the custard stains a red herring or just some extra motivation? Will we be able to drag a pew past some hippies or will we feel the twang of a guitar in the chops once again? How will we reach the gargoyle on the dodgy archway? What's the deal with the chilling visions of sacrifice in the altar room? If you listen to this and enjoy it, please let us know or even join a future live session and comment while we're playing. Thanks for coming. Let's go. Let's go! Let's go, baby! Okay, is everybody here? Hello, I'm Lee. Hello, I'm Swandis. Hello, I'm Rosie. Hi, I'm Woody. And hi, I'm Mike. Luca's not here yet. Did I not push to talk? No. Held space, but I think I was tabbed out. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. Hey, don't be tabbed out. Okay, at the beginning of this episode, um, I think I have something to show you all. Um, so I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I discovered. And I also discovered a few things about the forest area that we've just been to. And then um, after that, I think one of us should kind of do a little recap of where we are, like the area that we're in and what we're currently doing. And then uh, I think we should have a conversation about what we think we should do next. Uh, in that order, if that's all right with everybody. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get the game up. I'm not going to restore our game just yet because I want you all to see this, okay? Now, this is something that I kind of knew about, but I'd completely forgotten. And when I kind of, when I rediscovered it, I was just, like, face-palmed. Um, this is also not going to work very well for, for any podcast listeners um, because it's visual, but... Um, I want your reactions when I do this, okay? Are you ready for this? All right, if I go to the top of the screen here and right click and drag down. Oh. <laughs> what? So there's actually graphics in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I did wonder because I've, other um, Magnetic Scrolls games that I've played have had graphics. Yeah. But just assume this one was just text. Yeah, of course it has graphics. I mean, we're playing it. The 16-bit versions have graphics. I think, don't think the 8-bit versions do. Or maybe the C64 version does. But all, there's been, like, loads of disk access. I've been thinking, gosh, that's a lot of disk access. Right. And, it, you know, what's it loading? It must be loading a whole load of areas that we're about to discover. And then, you know, it, like, the locations are kind of... Uh, uh, you know, there's not that many of them. But, of course, it's actually... It's, it's loading in graphics and displaying them in the background in this draggable panel yeah. um so we have a bunch of graphics not every location has a has an image um and i think we're going to have to describe the images so that our podcast listeners know what what's going on but the but the first image that we get is uh a view from inside the goldfish bowl of the room that we're in and it is of course upside down so mm -hmm. if we flip over if we say turn over in the game, the image disappears and then reappears. And we're now looking at uh, the castle in the goldfish bowl the right way up. Brilliant. Yeah. So I don't think the images uh, make a big difference. I don't think they provide information that isn't already provided in the text descriptions, but they might be worth looking at. They might be worth giving us hints about things. I was also aware that I said, I think in the last episode, that I didn't really understand how the ruined archway was, what it looked like. I don't know if that image has, if that location has an image, but maybe some of these images will give us a little bit more context. Mm. Um, but what I would like to do is show you a couple of other things. So if we enter the castle and then swim smooth warp so we go to the clearing with a stump um but there's no new image we don't get an image the first time that we go um to the forest but if we go if we go straight to the to the smithy so um, immediately from landing we go southeast as soon as we go into wet forest the image is replaced 
there it is it's re just replaced with a view inside a forest with tree trunks and and a forest floor and we go southeast again to outside smithy if we go east into the smithy immediately two things happen first of all the image is replaced with the view inside the smithy so we can see the cupboard uh, and we can see we can't see the cage but we can see the fire burning in the forge and we can see an anvil um we can see the cage top left hand corner of the image oh yes right. you're right yes there is a there is a cage it looks like it's hanging there yep just the sort of silhouette outline of the cage in the top left um and what might be the asbestos gloves on top of a barrel but the other thing that happens if i drag the image out the, out of the way when we enter the smithy it says you enter the smithy and stop dead in your tracks one of the fins looks round startled by your arrival he draws a forefinger across his throat makes a gweek sort of noise and before you can get to him somersaults backwards into a wormhole which quickly closes so we actually surprise one of the fins if you go straight to the smithy at the beginning and then and then the final thing that i'd like to show you is that we don't even need to get the cage at all because we can just open the cage the parrot squawks nervously as you open the cage he stays firmly inside and then if we go west back out of the smithy it says outside smithy the parrot clearly enjoying his newfound freedom emerges from the smithy and heads skywards it looks unsure where to go next the parrot flies off over the trees so you don't have to kind of take the cage and open it anywhere you can literally just open it and leave and then the the parrot as soon as you leave this that location the parrot will fly off so there we go eh that's brilliant that I, i'm enjoying this <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice isn't it kind of like looking back on stuff that we already know just getting a little bit of a little bit of more information and little easter eggs and things that we didn't discover first time as far as i'm aware those are the only um images in in the forest area just that generic um picture of a, a forest you know trunks and and forest floor and the view from inside the smithy so but I, I don't know about images in the um abbey area so um let's go there and i'll bring the map up and maybe someone can talk about where we've been so i'll restore our game i made a few notes just off at the top of my head so they might be well they'll definitely be incomplete but then hopefully they're too wrong okay but, so we're in the Abbey and then we've got the three main rooms, which are the room which the drunk hippies are sat around a fire. And then to the south, there's a broken pew and to the north, there's the gargoyle on the arch. Mm -hmm. And then when we went down and underneath the sarcophagus lid, that's where the altar was with the 30 foot ceremonial cord and the square foot hole in the wall with the custard stains. Mm -hmm um so that was what i could remember i don't know if it's worth saying that we think we're part of a band we woke up in like a a transit van or something didn't we and we were one of the either one of the band or one of the roadies or something mm -hmm. and our current thinking is that we think that we might need to put the gargoyle in the hole hole um yeah is it worth just quickly doing an inventory as well because in order to exit the van, we had to find a torch. So we've got a we've got a torch that we've turned on. We've got a blanket. We've got a poster. Um, we've got a rope. We've got the rope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our current location is is the abbey. Um, some hippies are sitting around the fire in squalor, twanging out some terrible guitar and drinking heavily. And we're carrying an old blanket, a torch, a poster and a ceremonial cord. And we're wearing some jeans, some socks and a T-shirt. So we have everything apart from the pew. We tried dragging the pew, didn't we? But we had the torch on and the hippies 
either saw us or heard us. Yeah. Yeah, I think they heard us, turned round and then saw us. One other thing, Chris, it hasn't given us a different image. Is it worth going away and coming back to this location to see if it loads an image? Yes. Rather I, than I think I can get it to load an image. So let's let's just go south and uh, untie the the cord. Um didn't couldn't we take the pew before? Yeah, we could. Yeah. And we still can, but I don't think we're literally we're like carrying it. I think we're dragging it. So if you say take pew, I mean, I could now turn the, the torch off and try going north. So Woody was saying try to put the pew on the blanket. I was also wondering whether you could put it on the sarcophagus lid just to kind of aid sliding it, but... Well, we, we couldn't, we can't take, we can't pick up the sarcophagus lid. We can only move it. And I tried, I tried putting the pew on the blanket last week and it didn't work. I think we should just try turning the torch off and going north. And Go then it. if we die, we've learned something new. Yeah. Okay, switch off torch. With a sigh of relief, the torch batteries take a well-earned rest. And now let's try going north. Abby, some hippies are sitting around the fire in squalor, twanging out some terrible guitar. If I do an inventory, we're carrying the broken pew. I'm going to go north again. Yeah, it just lets us do it. So now we have everything so, we need at the ruined transept. So we, we overthought it. Can we uh, stand on the pew now to mm -hmm. get the gargoyle? I mean, the, the fact that we can tie the cord to the pew, I think, is still important. But let's drop the pew. Let's climb. Or let's, let's try tying cords to pew. And now climb arch. All right, stand on pew. The pew's a bit wobbly, but you can reach a little higher now. Looks like you could climb the arch if you wanted to. We do want to. Yes, we do. Climb arch. Archway. You're about 30 feet above ground. It feels as if the world is swaying, which you put down to vertigo. Only when you realise that you don't suffer from vertigo do you realise that the world really is swaying. This place isn't safe. A gargoyle stares at you with sightless eyes. And it's loaded a new image. <laughs> Ooh. So, yeah, we're really up high, 30 feet above the ground on the top of an arch with a, a very sad looking gargoyle staring at us. And the cord is 30 feet long as well. That's right. That's a good point. So do we tie the rope around the gargoyle and kind of lower it down? Tie cord to gargoyle. Oh, you can't do that to the ceremonial cord at the moment. Hmm. Is that because it's tied to the pew? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> that pew tying might just be a complete red herring, eh? Let's try get gargoyle. Your gentle tug starts the whole archway swaying dangerously. You stop before the lock collapses under you. Okay. I think I know what I need to do, right? I need to go down. Yeah. I need to untie the pew. Oh. I need to get the cord. Okay, I need to stand on the pew. I need to climb the arch. And I need to tie the cord to the gargoyle. The ceremonial cord is now fixed to the gargoyle. Now I need to go down again. All right, there's a crumbling archway and a broken pew here. Do I now pull the cord? Yeah. Pull cord. The cord tightens and the gargoyle takes the strain. As you pull harder, it comes free. That was the good news. The bad news is that you've brought down the rest of the arch as well, making a tremendous din. Looking towards the fire, you see several heads looking in your direction. The gargoyle lies at your feet. Oh, we haven't been lynched, though. No, we haven't. Uh, we still haven't turned the, the torch on. Oh, so grab the gargoyle and run. Yeah, well, run down, yeah. Let's get 
gargoyle you now have the gargoyle and down it's going to warn us that we've got no light it's too dark to see turn on torch okay so i wonder if we actually move downwards also our score has gone up mike if you're keeping track i'm not sure at what point that happened but we're on 140 now i'm already ahead of you i, okay. I missed the first one okay so i think climbing the arch took us to 130 and getting the gargoyle took us to 140. Yeah, that makes sense. Unless getting the pew past the hippies was also a, a score. Now, I'm not sure whether we actually went down or not. It was too, we must have gone down. So I think if we go south now, we go into the catacombs. Yes, thank God. Okay. There's a sarcophagus lid here. We go down. A sudden vision flashes before your eyes, chanting voices, ancient demons flashing flames altar room there is an ancient altar here do we want to try to put the gargoyle yeah. into the hole um place gargoyle in hole oh text with the ceremonial cord tied to it the gargoyle won't fit in the hole a number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge from who knows where seven of them to be precise they are not happy truth to tell they're extremely unhappy a bottle of vodka sails through the air it's not an offer of a drink, since it was aimed at your head. It connects. You disconnect from your host and spin through the dimensions towards your new host, Castle. Oh, do you think we got everything right except for not untying the cord? Yeah. How annoying. <laughs> when do we have time to untie the cord if they're so quick behind us? But maybe, yeah, maybe we just need to do it immediately. Untie the cord get gargoyle and untie cord then down turn on the torch south down put the gargoyle in the hole okay chris if we use the blanket nope would would if we put that on the floor would that dim some of the noise when it fell mm, possibly it's a whole archway that's coming down but yeah yeah that's a stretch i know but we don't actually know if it was a time thing or simply us trying to do it. A trigger. Tied. Yeah. So That's right. Let's just try it without the cord attached and this time maybe save. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can remember the sequence. Okay. I am going to save here. Oh, we can also watch the score. Oh, true. Yes. Oh, so we just got... We went past the hippies and the score still 120. So uh, let's see. Drop pew. Stand on pew. Climb arch. Tie cord to gargoyle. Down. Drop blanket. Pull cord. No, not pull cord, save. Okay, pull cord. It still says making a tremendous din. So get gargoyle and untie cord. Now we go down. Okay, switch on torch, south, down. Here we go then, I'm gonna place. Save, save. Uh, do we have time to save? No, I'm just gonna do it. I did just save just, to, just before I pulled the cord, so. Um, this looks like it's happened again. So I placed the gargoyle in the hole. The gargoyle is now inside the hole. There's a click and you stand back swiftly. The altar sinks into the ground as a column descends from the ceiling. A number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge from who knows where, seven of them to be precise. Do, do, do. You disconnect from your host and spin through the dimensions towards your new host. Chris, Yeah. rather than pulling the gargoyle and making it fall down, why we're on top, could we lower the gargoyle down? Mm. Would that be quieter? Well, I think the problem was when we tried to take the gargoyle, it said yeah. the archway was really dodgy didn't it 
Um, yeah, we're going to try and see what happens. I suppose so, yeah. But that's a different message than we got the first time, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's a click and you stand back swiftly. The altar sinks into the ground as a column descends from the ceiling. But that's because the cord wasn't still attached to it, so the gargoyle actually went in this time. Yeah, true. But the, the hippie still got to us. I wonder if we need to close the sarcophagus lid. Worth a try. Yeah. It gives it a purpose. I mean, I can try lower gargoyle, stand on pew, lower gargoyle. Yeah, so if I say lower gargoyle, it says your gentle tug starts the whole archway swaying dangerously. You stop before this, the lock collapses under you. Um, I, I did, I, I saved it right before I pulled it last time. So I'm gonna pull cord now and then I'm going to get gargoyle and untie cord. I'm going to go down, south, down. OK, so we can go in the dark all the way to the altar. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to move the lid. You can't see it here. Um, place. I'm going to have to switch the um, torch on, I think. And place gargoyle in altar. Ah. Oh. No, it's the same. And we were out of time. We didn't even place the gargoyle. As soon as we turned the, the, the torch on, the hippies were there. So I think it maybe is a timing thing. But we, we can't close the lid when we're in the altar room, because we can't see the lid. The lid is on the floor in the room above it. So the question is, when did the timer start? Yeah, well, presumably the timer starts when you pull the cord. So you think they're responding to the noise? Yeah. Not an unreasonable assumption. Is there any way we can use the bench to block them getting to us? Use what to block them? The pew. The pew. Thinking how can we slow them down? <laughs> yeah. I was hoping that, like, having the torch off would do it. Maybe we just need to do it in the dark. I mean, I switched the torch on before putting the gargoyle in the hole. Because I, I just figured that it would say you can't see but maybe we just have to do it in the dark. It doesn't make much sense though, does it? If Could we wait in the dark? Would the hippies go away? That's a good question. That's a good question, actually. Should we just go down there and wait? Yeah, there aren't any other locations, are there? There's, there's only, there's just a straight line down to the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah or can we hide somewhere? Yeah, I don't think there are any. Because they, they emerge from who knows where. It also says seven of them, to be precise, which aren't there seven deadly fins, right? So that means that we're not one of the fins. Like we haven't warped, we've warped into a roadie. We haven't warped into what, a, a band member. <laughs> like a minor, in, a minor little epiphany. So two things that I wanted to say. One is, I don't know if this is even worth it. If we just literally pull the rope, and then just go, wait, 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 wait. Do they turn up? Yes. Which, we could just, that's easy prove, to try, isn't it? Which would just prove that it's a time thing based on that. Uh, the other thing is, where the pew was, there was a note. That's the note from the van. That's the okay. note about Steve gone, going to get diesel. Right. Cool. Thank you. I mean, I could just pull cord and then wait. Time passes. Time passes. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Right, okay. <laughs> so, get gargoyle, untie it, down, south, down, switch on the torch, and put the gargoyle in the thing. What about if you turn the torch on before you pull the rope? 
Yes. Yes, that's it, Mike. You've cracked it. Of course. Switch on torch. Pull cord. Get gargoyle and untie cord. That's two moves. Right, down, south, down. Place gargoyle in hole. The gargoyle is now inside the hole. There is a click and you stand back swiftly. The altar sinks into the ground as a column descends from the ceiling. And now we have one more move here. I guess X column. The column has a niche in it, surrounded by an ornate carving. You wonder where it came from and whether you could get one for your front garden. A chalice rests in the niche. A number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge. Oh. Oh, gosh. Wow. Okay. So we need to use that move to take the chalice. Oh, I wonder whether... Do we think that the chalice is there for, like, the ring? Uh, no, was it a ring? Yeah. Yeah. Ring. yeah. That will warp us back and go in the box. Maybe. Yes. Yes. That's so cruel. That <laughs> I know, you have to you die. Know, yeah, you can't know that the chalice <laughs> is there. Where can we save a move, then? We can't. We don't need to save a move. We just The okay. move we save is oh. the examine col column. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Switch on torch. Pull cord. Get gargoyle and untie cord down south down place gargoyle in hole get chalice you grab the chalice intent on examining it you don't pay proper attention to the sounds behind you this is not a good idea the hippies have found a way in and are peering into the chamber. They do not look happy. A number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge from who knows where. Seven of them to be precise. They're not happy. Truth to tell, blah, blah, blah. We end up inside the castle. We don't have the chalice. Let's, let's look at the box. There's just a gold ring in it and we don't have the chalice anymore. Chris, yeah. is, it, is it worth... Again, just to test our theory, just waiting before we pull the cord to prove that it's pulling the cord that starts the timer. As opposed to what? Turning the light on? Turning the light on, walking past them. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, I completely agree that it feels like pulling the cord is what's going to get them chasing you but we're now in a situation where we have run out of turns. Do, do you want me to turn the torch on and just do that, like then pull the cord, then do the waiting and see if it's still seven moves like before? I mean, I'm pretty sure it is seven moves because, yeah, we gained one. I was going to suggest just waiting before we pull the cord. If you Oh, I see. If you, if you wait 10 times before we pull the cord and nothing happens... I mean, I can switch the torch on as well. Can you uh, pull the cord and then walk sheepishly south as if nothing to do with me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know what happens if we walk south. I guess they would just attack us straight away, but we can try. Um, but yeah, if I, if I say wait, wait, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten yeah i i think it, i think it's the noise oh wait a minute what if we wrap the blanket round the gargoyle before we tie the cord to it Ooh. Try it. is it not the archway coming down that's making the noise is it only the gargoyle coming down um Maybe. 
stand on, I've got the blank here, I'm standing on the pew, I'm going to climb the arch. I'm going to untie the cord. I'm going to wrap gargoyle in blanket. Don't understand wrap. Oh. Place blanket on gargoyle. You can't do that to the gargoyle. Okay. Can you push gargoyle? Cover gargoyle in blanket. Nope. Push gargoyle. Your gentle tug starts the whole archway swaying dangerously. You stop before the lock collapses under you. Could we do something that Woody suggested? Could we? Can you put the blanket on the ground? I tried that before. I tried that already. Okay. Yeah. Tie cord to gargoyle. Down. Place uh, blanket on ground. I did just. I did drop it before. No. Okay. I say place blanket on ground. It says a cursory glance at the ground persuades you that it's of no importance. Um, I, mean, I I suspect that this is what's supposed to happen. The crumbling archway looks dangerous. I think getting the gargoyle down this way and then having seven turns to complete the game, I think that's correct. There's something about that that kind of feels like, okay, the puzzle here is how do you get the chalice? before they I don't know is it worth doing it again and instead of getting the chalice looking at it because didn't it say something about how we didn't pay enough attention to yeah. the chalice yeah maybe okay pull cord get gargoyle and untie it one other down, thought is, south, down. Mm. is that the puzzle the puzzle isn't how can you do what you need to do within seven turns because maybe that's impossible. Maybe the puzzle is how can you increase it from seven turns to more than True. seven turns. Yes. yes. Has, is there a way that we can figure out to delay them thinking of ways of using the poster to delay them or something? It's all Again, lots of straws being clutched up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, e either it's how you can, how can you do it in seven moves, or it's how do you prevent them from getting to you at all. Yeah, in terms of clutching at straws, could we hide under the blanket, for example? So um, I've put the gargoyle in the hole. I think we have one turn here, so I'm going to use that to look at the chalice. Can you save it here as a different save point? I could, but I suspect that's going to cost me the turn that I need. Mm, saving takes a turn, does it? I, well, we can find out. It didn't last time. I think we checked that. Okay. Um, okay. Do we do we get to look at the chalice? Okay. So if I examine the chalice, it says the glass chalice is beautifully fluted and a delicate example of the glassmaker's art. It contains a grommet. And then a number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge. Right. So I did write something down. Uh, so uh, a yes. grommet is this ring, isn't it? It's like a gold ring. Yeah, but didn't um, someone said, have you come for my grommet? There, that's right. Right, right at the start. Yeah. Is it, um... Mickey said it, I think. So do you think we can just take the grommet straight away? Yeah. So I'm going to try it. I've restored that save right at that point. I'm just going to say get grommet and see what happens. Okay. The glass chalice lies flush with the opening in the column. You'll have to take the chalice before you can get the grommet. <laughs> oh, man. And then we die. Maybe we should try what Woody said. Go... Before we even do anything in that bit, go under the blanket. Yeah, I agree. Like hide under blanket or? No. 
wear you can't wear blank we've tried that and cover doesn't work so you know we've tried to close the lid of the sarcophagus behind us yes could we instead use the poster to cover the hole that we've just closed? Or the blanket, but yeah. I was just thinking hang blanket or something. What are we thinking about covering with the blanket or the poster? The, the hole to the altar room. I'm just going to check the timing on this. Get gargoyle. Untie gargoyle. Down, south, down place gargoyle in hole get chalice and get grommet oh it is the same sorry i thought for for some reason i thought the text was different but it is the same we 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 have not solved it it's still the same how about if we turn the flashlight off after we put the uh, the gargoyle, gargoyle in. in. We could do it all in the dark. Yeah. It's that bit in the text where it says the hippies have found a way in. It's almost like it's mm. hidden that we should stop them finding their way in. But are there any other exits or entries in that room? No? What What about, I'm thinking of a death in paradise type thing where the killer like makes it look like they weren't in the room and they use a blanket or a towel to close the door if we went back and put the blanket under the soft sarcophagus lid then we went when we went down into the altar room then we pull blanket would it close the the lid place blanket under lid you're not you're unable to do that if I say move lid, it says you succeed in moving the sarcophagus lid, but nothing happens. Do we still have the cord? Uh, no, I've dropped the cord. I don't. I don't think we can do anything with us with the lid at all. To be honest, we can't take it. We can't. We can move it, but nothing happens. I think it's just there to be moved out the way to to show the hole. We could try place blanket over hole. Can't see a hole here. Hide in debris. There's an exit leading down. It says it doesn't actually say it's a hole. So we need to go down first and then plug it from the other. Maybe. What happens if you look now? What does it say about where we've come from? Uh, in the catacombs, the ceilings collapse as, as disturbed the sepulchral debris in the sacred place, throwing it all over the floor. A doorway leads north to the antechamber, and there is an exit leading down. Sorry, I meant if we go down... To the altar. To the altar, sorry, yeah. Uh, altar room. This icy room has been sealed for a long time. Cold air slices through you, a chill foreshadow of your doom. Terrifying images flash into your mind. You feel that you have violated this place somehow. There is an ancient altar here. Can you do anything with the custard? Doesn't, well, there isn't any custard. If we look at the hole, the hole is a foot square. Something important has been removed from it. Oh, if you look at the altar, maybe? Hideous faces carved from stone are positioned halfway along three of the four sides. Intriguingly, one side has a hole surrounded by custard stains where a gargoyle should be. If you say, look, custard, you don't see any custard here. There's custard stains, but I, I just think that's random. What are we missing? Can I look at... Oh, look. So we have an image of the altar. So this is actually what we're looking at. So you can see there's a gargoyle on one edge of the altar, and there's a hole on the other edge and that, that's presumably the ceremonial cord that we've taken that's draped over it so we're getting the gargoyle from on top of the arch and we're placing it in that hole and when we do so the whole altar disappears down and is replaced by a column from above and in that column is a niche and in that niche is a chalice and in that chalice is a grommet and we need to get possession of that grommet but to do so, we need to have the chalice in our possession and then take the grommet out. 
And from the moment that we pull the cord that's tied to the gargoyle on top of the archway, we only have seven moves before the d seven deadly fins catch up to us and kill us. So somehow we have to pick up the gargoyle, untie it from the cord, go down and south and down again, put the gargoyle in the hole, take the chalice and take the, the grommet from inside the chalice. And that's eight moves. But by move seven, the fins catch up with us and kill us. Oh, that's interesting. So never mind the size of your muscles. You're not going anywhere with a sarcophagus lid tucked under your arm. I've actually got the sarcophagus lid. When I moved it, I managed to pick it up. Uh, but I can't go... Oh. I can go down. And I have the sarcophagus lid with me. Drop lid. Sarcophagus lid dropped. Can get you, lid. If you put it in the altar room and then when you get in there, cover the entrance up with the lid. Yes. Place lid over entrance. Oh, it says I can't see a glade here. Oh dear. Um, place lid over door. Exit. How about replace lid? Yeah, or close lid. Yeah. No, replace lid, it says I don't understand replace. Close lid, you can't do that to the sarcophagus lid. If I say put lid, it says into what? Put lid into hole. Entrance. It says the sarcophagus lid won't fit if you try putting it into the hole, but it thinks that's the gargoyle hole, I would imagine. Put lid into entrance. No, it, it's getting confused over entrance. We exit instead. Close sarcophagus with lid. If I say put lid into exit, it says into what? Question mark. Uh, there is no sarcophagus. We've already tried this. There's no. There's just a lid. You said that you couldn't take it upstairs. Is that right? So you can't take it up to the, where the archway is. Yes, I can go up to the catacomb, catacombs, and I can go north. I, if I try going north, it says, "Never mind the size of your muscles. You're not going anywhere with a sarcophagus lid tucked under your arm." Uh, the only other thing I thought of was whether to immediately before you put the gargoyle in the hole, is to lie on the altar. And go down with it. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you can lie on the altar. You lie down on the ancient altar. I'm not sure whether it gets squashed by the column. Column. The whole oh. thing apparently seems to descend, so... It might, it might just take us away from the group because then they won't see us. Possible. And then we might be able to get, make our way back up. So you think we should we should lie on the altar and then put the gargoyle into the hole? Yeah, and that would be the last turn, won't it? Yeah. Goodness me. This is hard. Okay, let's try this. Right. Pull cord. Get... Gargoyle and untie cord. Down, south, down. Lie on altar. Place gargoyle in hole. No, that's the move seven and then we get killed. It does the, the gargoyle is now inside the hole. There's a click and you stand back swiftly. The altar sinks into the ground. The fact that there's a click and you stand back would indicate that it's not expecting you to be lying on the altar, I guess. And then a number of unpleasant looking hippies emerge and we're back in the castle. Do Is the only doorway that we go through 
the one down into the catacombs, or is there another doorway we could block before that? With the lid, I mean. There was a doorway into the catacombs where it asked us if we really wanted to go that way, isn't there? Could we try blocking that door with the maybe. Sock, this lid? Yeah, maybe. Let's restore. And let's just go down. Oh, let's drop the cord and go down. Antichamber. So the antechamber does say upward is the transept and you can enter the catacombs through the doorway to the south. So we could go south and then get lid and then place lid over doorway. I don't follow you. Um, put lid into doorway. The sarcophagus lid is now inside the doorway. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Do, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Gotta do it. Can I remember this? Pull cord. Timer starts. Get gargoyle and untie cord. What? You don't need to untie it, do you? Just to take it down? No. No, you can untie it in the catacombs, can't you? Yeah, after you've blocked the door. Okay, I've got the gargoyle. Down, south. Get lid. You are carrying too much already to get the sarcophagus lid. So just put the gargoyle down. Drop gargoyle. Get lid. We're going to die. <laughs> put lid into doorway. The sarcophagus lid is now inside the doorway. You hear voices in the room outside. After a short discussion, they decide that you must have been crushed by the collapsing ceiling. The voices fade away, sounding heartlessly cheerful in the face of your death. Callous brutes. Yeah! Take us, take us to glory, Chris. All right. <laughs> Get gargoyle. Anti cord. Down. Place gargoyle in hole. Get chalice. Get grommet. Oh. I've got all the time in the world now. I misspelled grommet. Oh no. Oh, okay. I misspelt Gromit because I spelled it with one M and it said, I don't understand Gromit. So I looked at the chalice and it said, the glass chalice is beautifully fluted and a delicate example of the glass maker's art. It contains a Gromit. And then it says, the members of the band close in. Step by step, they move towards you. Swiftly, you execute plan B5. Unfortunately, you don't have an M16 rifle at hand right now. The hippies don't, don't have an M16 rifle either. This doesn't even things up too much. Though, there are still seven of them and only one of you. You come second, a very poor second, and we're back in the castle. So we didn't have all the time in the world. We didn't have all the time in the world, no. Where did they come from? Yeah. Okay. Do we just buy an extra couple of turns? Yeah, exactly. Blocking the doorway just bought us enough. To... It just bought us a couple, didn't it? Is it yeah. not just? Is it not just that you spelled Gromit wrong? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Try, let's try again then. God damn it! Pull cord. Get gargoyle. Down. South. Drop. Gargoyle. Get lid put lid into doorway get gargoyle and untie cord okay i think we're actually a move ahead now because we now hear the voices in the room outside down place gargoyle into hole get chalice Get Gromit 
I'm never going to misspell grommet again. G-R-O-M-M-E-T. Oh, you grab the... When I get the chalice, it says you grab the chalice. Intent on examining it, you don't pay proper attention to the sounds behind you. This is not a good idea. The hippies have found a way in and are peering into the chamber. They do not look happy, but it gives me one more go. So get, get grommet. Oh, no. It would have paid to look inside the chalice first. Your instructor told you times like this would come when the odds are stacked against you. Times when the only thing standing between you and certain death would be your training. It's a pity you missed that lesson. Fourteen rather grubby hands grab you and start doing the sorts of things you don't want to read about. You promptly faint, relaxing the host parasite interface, sending you reeling and rocking through the dimensions back to the goldfish bowl. You really made a mess of that, didn't you? Said Sir Playfair's voice. Oh well, we'll see what we can do about setting up the warp again. Panchak's out. Oh my goodness. Ah, annoying. So next week, start by looking in the chalice. Shall I Was do it again? Glass, can you just break it? How come there were 14 people? 14 yeah. hands. Uh, hands. Uh, Oh, yeah. Pull cord. Get gargoyle. Damn. There was a very strong hint about noise. So is that trying to steer us towards doing something with a blanket to dampen the noise? But I'm once again clutching straws. Well, if this doesn't work, I think we wait till next week. Putting the gargoyle into the hole. I'm getting the chalice. They're peering into the chamber. I'm going to look in the chalice. Yep. It's, it contains a grommet. The members of the band close in. Step by step, they move towards you. So we still haven't solved it. We're closer. We can get the chalice and look in it. We need to do it in fewer steps. Is there a difference between examining the chalice and looking into chalice? No. I mean... The only other thing um, I'm thinking is, do you remember when we died before and we went in? It didn't restore the game. It didn't reset the puzzle. It, The puzzle was kind of... Things had moved, haven't mm -hmm. they? So if you just go back through the warp now and go back there. To be honest, it's now 60 minutes past eight. And I, I know we feel like we're right on the edge of it, but there's still something that we haven't figured out yet. No. And it, it may have to do with the blanket we haven't used or the poster possibly, but I think there's still something else. So I think I'm gonna wind it up. I know we're so close. I really thought we had it. I thought buying that extra time re really made the difference, but we're just like one turn short of being able to take the grommet out of the chalice, it appears. From a score point of view, there were 80 points on offer in the smooth warp, and we've collected 70 points in the jagged warp. Okay. <laughs> so there is a final 10 points, possibly. Also, interestingly, the final thing in the smooth warp was that we actually wore the ring. It was wearing the ring that True. did it, getting it, so. Yeah, maybe we are a few turns short then. Yeah, we need to, we need to get maybe, the grommet to wear it. But. Maybe if we just drank from the chalice and swallowed the grommet. It doesn't say there's a liquid inside it. Mm. It's just a chalice with a grommet in it. In it. Maybe we need to wear the grommet. I've no idea. Like we just run out of time. But um dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I think maybe we need to watch the uh watch the stream back and read those uh descriptions really carefully <laughs> and figure something out. But um I hope you all enjoyed it. I know we didn't really progress very far. We made some progress. 
but uh, it's convoluted. There's a lot going on in just a small number of locations in this game. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see you all next week. See everybody. Bye. 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 Rocky Gromit. <laughs> and that's it. No cigar this time. Not even a vape. How are we going to slow those fins down? God, I want to binge the next episode right now. Yeah, but we'll have to wait. That's the whole format, in it? Unless you're discovering this a long time after we made it. Huh, yeah, in which case, binge away and uh, come back and let us know how to solve this thing. Dear Lord, surely we won't still be trying to figure it out. And they won't know the solution anyway, not from listening to more podcasts of us not solving the damn puzzle. <laughs> I'm off to watch Primer. <laughs> Bye. Bye.